Broadcasting live from Haunted Fengraf on the Plain of Innistrad, this is Tap Tap Concede. Welcome everybody to Tap Tap Concede. My name is Graham. Joining me is Wheeler. Thank you for having me in my shirt here, Graham. It's great <laughs> to be here. And Ben. Uh, be here. Thank you for... it. Uh, d- d- hi. Good job, good job. We got there. And why Haunted Fengraf? Because it has the word random on it. Because today it's an episode of Scryfall Roulette. What is that? Stay tuned to find out. Before we get to it, a reminder, the show is brought to you by Card Kingdom. Please check out cardkingdom.com slash LRR for all of your cardboard needs. We keep working with them because they're great. Got excellent customer service and super fast shipping. When you say cardboard roulette like that, or scryfall roulette, it Mm -hmm. sounds like there should be a musical sting. Right? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And then the audience claps. James, clap. Great. Awesome. Yeah. (laughs) James is also here, of course. Uh, And this show and everything we do is brought to you by you and your kind support of our Patreon at patreon.com slash loading ready run. Thank you so much. (sighs) Right. What is scryfall roulette? I actually wasn't here for the last one, but basically... James is going to hit the random button on Scryfall, everyone's favorite magic online card database, and then uh, show us the cards, and we're going to talk about them. If we have anything to talk about, I guess we'll find out. Yes. We, I mean, yes, we will have <laughs> things to talk about. <laughs> I mean, I'm curious to see uh, my – because I'm, fill, I'm filling in for Nelly yeah. today, and I feel like my level of knowledge is probably not as high, but I'm excited to see if I get to go, <gasps> yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'd be fascinated if there's a card that Wheeler's like, nah, I have no opinion here. Like, that would be <laughs> – I feel like that's unlikely. Where you don't have a thought on a card. I imagine if that pops up, you two will be able to fill it because it's either like something that is a limited, a brand new-ish limited card where I'm like, I didn't even know this existed. Mm. Or um, something where in my head it's like... (laughs) It's not as good as this common from Tempest or whatever, <laughs> you know? All right. Well, uh, let's let's get into it. James, Spin hit us. the wheel. <laughs> uh, I, have a, I have a thought on this. Yeah. Very cute. It's yeah. adorable. <laughs> I forgot about this token. This is a, for those listening, this is a dinosaur cat token. It's a red-white 2-2 dinosaur cat token. From Commander 2020. What deck is this from? This is created by Gavi, the Nest Warden, mm-hmm. a.k.a. Gavin. This is one of the Ikoria decks, isn't yep. it? The, Just because it looks like it. Yes, the, yeah. the Jeskai or Raugrin uh, cycling deck. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Which most mm-hmm. people ended up kind of going... Yeah, oops, all cycling. Like they, I feel like they they completely like went all in on, on cycling yeah. as in like the tune-up. Yeah. And they decided to go that route. My... This is actually a deck that I have built and played for a lot over the pandemic because just not, you know, with only webcam magic or online magic, you didn't, I didn't get that satisfaction of drawing a bunch of cards that I would from like casting Ancestral Recall at (laughs) Canlander events. Mm. And so I built Gavi Polymorph, where, oh, yeah, but I only polymorphed into scholar of the ages which is like a seven mana three three that brings back two instants or sorceries so one of those is zenith flare and the yes, other is uh, any cycling card to curious. reset with astral slide and yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh so many cards to i i really a want to go back to ikoria yeah. because it was a cool plane that i don't think got a fair shake because obviously it happened during the pandini mm-hmm. so he just didn't really get to do as much with it uh but also Maybe an environment where Zenith Flare doesn't <laughs> exist. Yeah, Zenith yeah. Flare. The Zenith yeah. Flare deck was spooky. Like, it was. It, and I think it. I think much like. I mean, it's mimetic in a way, but much like the way that uh, in cons everybody wants to draft like five color morph. Mm-hmm. Everybody wanted to try and do the Zenith Flare deck, and it yeah. ended up kind of like throwing off a lot of signals and stuff. But uh, I mean, I I appreciate every time they bring cycling back as a mechanic. That's why I really loved Shadows of Renistrad. Uh, remastered recently on on Arena because it had a bunch of cards from original Innistrad, but the flashback was only there for two weeks, uh, and and even then, even when flashback was in it, you were nowhere near guaranteed a spider spawning. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't just everyone trying right. to tr- yeah. trying to build a spider spawning deck and hoping they get there. So. Well, there was enough like good stuff I think mm-hmm. in it that you could kind of go in multiple directions. Yeah, I was I I was past multiple travel preps. That's and wild. I was like that that that's, that that's would not wrong. happen. That's <laughs> yeah. so wrong. Don't do that. Don't do that. But like I was at Command Fest last weekend and uh, they had cons drafts. What? Yeah, it was. Dang. It, it was. Yeah, it was cons and Fade Reforged. Sick. Uh, and 
I just heard the, the the stories of people being like, right, okay, nobody actually did do the five color morph thing, which was nice, but instead people were like, well. I could probably go four colors because there's just so <laughs> many multicolored like bombs in that set. Someone's like, yep. "Well, I'm like definitively an Orzov, but I did open Savage Knuckle Blade." <laughs> so- <laughs> oh, good, yeah, yeah. I'm Mardu splashing blue for big knocks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. this cat's adorable. It's I can't, get, I can't good. get over it. All right, next. Whoa. Mitotic manipulation. One blue, blue for a sorcery from. Is this new Phyrexia? A Mirden besieged. Mirden besieged. Look at the top seven cards of your library. You may put one of those cards onto the battlefield if it has the same name as a permanent. Sorry, that was one sentence. You may put one of those cards onto the battlefield if it has the same name as a permanent. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Man, so this got rampant growth in Commander. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I guess yeah, that would do lands. That would also hit something your opponent controls in a weird situation where that's relevant. Is this good? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. That's, that's okay. terrible. <laughs> but yeah. you know, I actually good. have never seen this card. No. And I, if I was in mono blue, I would almost consider running this just because it it could ramp you. And, I mean, maybe if you're lucky, if you go up against somebody that's got, like, that turn one soul ring, maybe you find your soul ring. I don't know if it's strictly good <laughs> at all, but, like, I didn't actually even consider that. You're uh, looking at this from a commander perspective. I'm looking at it from yeah. a singleton yeah, 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 perspective. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, and definitely not Canadian Highlander. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. What a weird card. Yeah. I'm glad that it was rare, because that meant it would only have shown up sometimes in draft. <laughs> and all the but, time in your pack. Booth, yeah. In your packs, say. prize packs, yeah. Yeah. Huh. All right. The art on this is great, though. Yeah, that's creepy. It almost has, uh, like, a Kami sort of vibe mm. to it a little bit. Oh, I see. It's like two of those things, whatever they are, um, looking at one another, and we're seeing the back of one of them. Uh, <laughs> uh. I, I do like do like the very passive aggressive comment from Venser in the flavor text. Which is, they can't even comprehend nature. How can they improve it? <laughs> These idiots. <laughs> this, this famous last words like yeah, I guess quotes moments before disaster. What right. are you gonna do? Complete me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Turn me into a corpse puppet? Yeah. Man yeah. who was turned into corpse puppet? You know, make me a golem if I'm wrong. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What a what a strange card. Interesting idea. All right, next, oh, yeah. verdant succession. Oh. Wow, this art. Oh yeah. Four and a green for an enchantment from Odyssey. Odyssey. Thank you. I, I know that that I know the expansion symbol is the Mirari, but I mm-hmm. keep forgetting it's Odyssey. This this period of magic is a is a big void in my knowledge. Good news. <laughs> this is uh, primo Wheeler time. Oh, this is like childhood Wheeler got a hyper focus on something. Right. Might as well be every card from Odyssey <laughs> block. <laughs> whenever this card reads, whenever a gr- green non token creature is put into a graveyard from play, that creature's controller may search their library for a card with the same name as that creature and put it into play. We've got a theme today. <laughs> if that player does, they shuffle their library. Okay, so it's symmetrical, but that's only relevant if your opponent's also playing green. So whenever a non-token green creature dies, so this is terrible for singleton and limited. <laughs> well, because you now, have to go looking for a creature of the same name as the creature that died. Okay, yeah. So, well, I'm I'm coming at it from so green has yet to have a. a you can have as many yeah. ones in your deck, but there are cards that like make things the same color. So you're trying to like turn your ravenous rats green, so that yeah. when it dies, you can go looking for more another. ravenous oh, rats. Oh, you know what you could do with this? That's true because it you don't it's, it it doesn't it, have to be green. It, it only cares know. if it's green when it dies. Yeah. It doesn't care if the card you're searching for is green. What if we animate a forest and then <laughs> sacrifice that forest to pull out another forest that is potentially animated through some amount of the your forests are now also creatures cards. This goes into Yodora. It does. Yeah, this goes into yeah. I've been playing Yodora on cuz uh, she's on uh, Arena now. From, oh right. Uh, from the mom Grave Gardener. Uh, yes. From the mom ones and uh yeah, there's actually some really cool stuff you can do. There's like an alchemy card that's like X and a green, or Grothian something or other, that it's like X and a green sorcery. You put uh, two one one counters on a on X lands. Oh, and yeah. And then yeah. when they and they get animated, and when they die, you seek 
uh, a forest and put it onto the battlefield. Oh, sweet. So it doesn't like, it, you don't lose the land. But if you have Yodora out, you've effectively, when they die, they double, right? Because you right. flip the forest over on its back and it's mm-hmm. a forest now. Uh, wow. So you know what? I'm, I'm, let's put, I'm going to put Verdant Succession in a Yodora deck. <laughs> that actually seems like it might work. I mean, I, yeah. Certainly not on Arena, but uh, yeah. The art also looks like it's from like a Heroes of Might and Magic box art. It that, does. Yeah. <laughs> that, this is some classic Edward Love uh, that. P. Beard Jr., uh, artist of uh, Birds of Paradise. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. The, um, uh, in that deck on Arena, mm-hmm. are you talking about like Brawl? Like yes, Yodora Brawl. Brawl. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Glistening Dawn. From March of, March of the Machine? Right. This is like... The... It's two green, green. You incubate twice X. Incubate X twice, where X is the number of lands you control. Yeah. So you're just like, eh, I'm just going to make two eight eights for four mana. Yeah. Like, this seems pretty pretty great. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I, I, I had never done anything with it until I resolved it. But in Yodora or any deck where you're ramping to Oblivion, mm-hmm. uh, turn new for the, the new, the newest, the completed Nissa. Uh, oh, gets to come in com- and minus seven. Yeah, yeah. completed Nissa is bafflingly yes. good. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that that's been my crater hoof like oh yeah fair <laughs> like enough card in uh, in this and fair uh, enough yeah a lot of really really cool cards for it. Sweet. Is I'm sorry I'm distracting yeah. again. Isn't the the um the uh the seven seven it's it's not cra- it's the crater hoof at home the and pigs raise four and runners. raise four runners are they on arena? Yeah, they are. Okay. Crater hoof is also on arena. Oh mm-hmm. right. Is but, and it and decimator of provinces. Yeah, the one yes. just got added yeah. from with yeah. shadows. Yeah, so you got your of, pick. You lot you of pigs. A lot of pigs. <laughs> a lot of pigs. <laughs> nice. All right, next. <laughs> Ooh. Took All right. near Deathlock. Took near Deathlock. Okay, so this is back from. I'm going to assume this is from Legends. Yeah, let me get <laughs> you the. Let me get you the Legends printing. Oh, there we oh. go. Excellent. Green, green, red, red for a two-two <laughs> legend <laughs> with flying. <laughs> Classic green red flyers, mm-hmm. and for red green and tap, target creature gains plus two plus two until end of turn. I wow would slam dunk pick this because legend sucks oh, yeah. in terms of its creature quality. Yeah, this is actually pretty good by legend. Two standards. two flyer for four. The, yeah, that pumps things. Yeah, <laughs> not bad. Yeah, the art looks like. What is the this concept art? art for what the art is going to be? <laughs> Tuknir is wearing a skull. Or a helmet made of a couple different skulls of like tiny dinosaurs. Yeah. yeah. An explorer of the ether, Tucknir often discovers himself in the most unusual physical realms. <laughs> Coming to you live from the place where I'm only a head. <laughs> I wonder if he's... I, maybe he's in um, Xerix or something. <laughs> unusual physical realms. It's Tucknir a... a a planeswalker, an explorer of the ether. What does that mean? Well, and this is also interesting from a time where you've got the the watermark for the artist right on the yeah know, there too. Sometimes back in the day, yeah. they would they would let the artist's signature or or watermark be be on the art. I'm yeah. a big Liz Danforth fan, and yeah. I gotta say, I don't think this is one of her strong new pieces. <laughs> but what else is Liz Danforth illustrated? Jay? Mystic Decree. Ooh, oh, okay, right. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean. This is a good one from uh, Homelands that uh, if James is pulling it up right now. I mean, hey, here's another good legendary. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> it, <laughs> looks like, it looks like Chewbacca a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> or like like Benji the dog. <laughs> it's another good um, uh, legendary creature for them to eventually, you know, have some sort of rejuvenation mm. like uh torwauki yeah yeah tuck near didn't make the cut i guess for this one but maybe yeah we'll go back probably because like i mean zira arian has a lot to work with yes right you know it's like very iconic art riding a dragon uh no not zira sorry i'm um savitri scarzam is the one yeah. i was thinking of uh scarzam's dragon and all that not yeah, not a lot to work with here from Tucknir. But you yeah. but you know that when those legends came out, for every single legend that didn't make it, even if it was just Tucknir Deathlock, there was one player that's like, Oh, come on, no Tucknir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, there was a lot of people who had like their checklist yeah. and stuff. They're like they're they're positing their guesses and whatnot. I'm surprised Angus McKenzie didn't get a didn't yeah. get a re a, a rebrand. Uh all right, let's go to the next card. Uh, incredibly timely. Oh, hey. hey. It's Urabrask the Hidden. 
New Nebraska is so messed up, dude. <laughs> this one is also like really good. Yeah, I like them a lot. But uh... so this is the first Urbrask. So yeah. it's three red red for a four four. Creatures you control have haste, and creatures your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. So it's just uh, yeah, it's your stuff go fast, their stuff go slow. When the Miran resistance arrived, the Furnace Dwellers looked to Urabrask for guidance. His decree stunned the others. Let them be. I lost to this yesterday. It's yeah, dark. because this cycle of Praetors is in the Multiverse Legends sheet. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, turns out when your creatures enter tapped yeah. and theirs have haste, mm -hmm. you cannot win. No. <laughs> you yeah. don't have removal. I feel <laughs> like... Die. This, this guy, in, this one in particular, gets a lot of flack mm -hmm. for being like... Under, I mean, maybe underwhelming could be the right word for commander players because it is only five mana, and yeah. commander players only want things that cost six or greater. But like this card in commander is messed up. Yep. Like in the ninety nine or as a commander, if you just want to build like beep beep vroom zoom with your favorite creatures that have like attack triggers or ETBs, yeah, it's just really fun. Like this plus like Goblin Rabble Master just starts. Getting it popping real quick. That's interesting though, because it's like I would take Urbrask over like original Urbrask over original Jin on like a lot of days. Yeah. Jin I mean Jin gets points for the people whose personalities are I'm gonna be a dick to the other three people <laughs> at the table. <laughs> like but. if if these are all in the command zone. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'm just gonna welcome welcome to me thinking about magic. It's yeah, always about yeah, commands. Exactly. Zone. But it's like I, I'm gonna take Urbrask most of the time, I think. Like I yeah. mean, original, like, all of them are so high-costed. Mm -hmm. um, I would consider Vorinclex. Um, but, yeah, Urbrask, I would kind of windmill slam. Like, this guy's gross. Yeah, he goes real fast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, next. Oh, Sphere yeah. <laughs> of Resistance. Two-mana artifact. All spells cost an additional one to play. Mm. A sphere pushes equally in all directions. See, because it's symmetrical. This this art is actually <laughs> sweet. You've got like a bunch of different mogs. You've got like I think Some there's a slivers. skeleton in the top left and, and a yeah, sliver. sliver on the top right. The the sliver on the bottom right kind of has like a human face, so maybe it's more of like a thrall. Maybe yeah. They're there's... just not having a good time. So this one doesn't make it into stacks or <laughs> uh, death and taxes, does it? No, it was kind of in older. Like if you wanted to go really stacksy. But nowadays, there are just better things to do for Highlander. Mm -hmm. um, and then the card is an all-star in Vintage. And might still see, like, maybe one of play in some of the grindier lands decks in Legacy. But that really? could just be boomers holding on to so, <laughs> the ways of 2014 Legacy. So what's, what, are, what are you... If you're, pl if you're the Sphere of Resistance player, what are you doing to make this not hurt you so bad? I feel like you get away... Because if you're playing, like, Affinity... This yeah. kind of pays for itself on the on the reduction thing because it counts as an artifact, mm. right? Yeah, against decks that are trying to play a whole bunch of cheap spells to reach a critical mass to storm you out or do something else, uh, them having to pay one more for every single spell is backbreaking. Where you can just go like, yeah, I'll pay three mana for Arcbound Ravager mm -hmm. or Thalia. Like mm. I have, that's fine. It's symmetrical, but you are the one using it, and so you have built your deck around being able to take advantage of this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also an artifact, so Mishra's Workshop is, you know, a magic card. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think I feel like like when we were doing our our uh, our CDH tribal thing, yeah. dampening spear. Oh man, spear messed Damp us up so Damp bad. Damp right? Damping, damping, damping spear. Damping. God, I was going to do thing, that. Yeah. Damping spear. <laughs> uh, so. I mean, yeah, this obviously doesn't ramp, but this also doesn't need this also doesn't give you your first one for it, regular on rates. So. It's also a classic case of just like th not that commander has the multiples of this card, but you're going to play a, a you know, stacks pieces upon stacks pieces because it's not the first one that really gets you, but the first one often gives you enough time to develop the second one mm. and then you're just locked out and at any point in time if you miss like a land drop or you can't develop your mana or they have like a wasteland or a strip mine then it's just you're just not playing magic <laughs> yeah it's great mm -hmm. what expansion symbol is that exodus exodus, exodus. Oh, i couldn't even remember it the All first right. the first set to have color-coded uh rarity symbols mm -hmm. oh okay yeah. that's a good thing to have added Next. 
Uh, more recently, Champion of the Flame. One in a red for a 1 1 human warrior. This is from Dominaria United, right? Yeah. Dominaria. Dominaria, sorry. Yeah. Dominaria. Uh, it's got trample, and Champion of the Flame gets plus two, plus two for each aura and equipment attached to it. I love this limited deck. Yeah. That you play. I mean, if you get Valduk and stuff, you're kind yeah. of like, that's, that's the place where you want to be. I only really saw someone like just shine with this once, but they had, they had, like you say, they had Valduk. They had like, two of these and just so many auras and equipment and it was like oh that thing's a that thing's a seven seven with trample plus all the other abilities it's like, i can't i can't do anything with that it was great yeah i think especially with like dub this man yeah with equipment and stuff like obviously when you when you look at it math math wise right you're like you're paying potentially around like five or six mana for kind of like to kind of turn this thing on and stuff. But then it's like this creature that is now bigger, much better on rate. And then afterwards, if it dies, you still have the equipment around that you can, mm-hmm. you can do things with too. So and it's got trample. Yeah. I'm a really, really big fan of they breathe in, in mom. There's a two, two trampler that gets plus one, plus one, if it's attacking a battle. Yeah. Um, and I love that card. I love low pow tramplers. Yes. You're always like, What's the trick here? Yeah, yeah, they're so great. What are you planning? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, like this, like literally this and dub is like five mana and two cards, but five mana for a five five trample first strike. All yeah, right, I'm okay <laughs> with that. Just yeah. the short sword too. Like yeah. short sword yeah. even was great. I love the the aura part of red, like giving red cards more of a yeah. You can use auras, yeah, especially because all the red auras are basically just this creature's really mad, yeah. um, <laughs> and so it fits it. But giving the flexibility of aura and equipment means that like you're not really getting blown out as much if you want to put like a short sword on it or whatever the Leonin Scimitar variant from Dominaria was. Like one man to play, one man to equip. They were short sword, yeah. One plus one. Yeah. Because those are just such a, like, you can include in your deck, it just modifies the stats of whatever creature, and it's super cheap, and it's just really appealing to put those two cards together. Mm -hmm. It's great. And then, yeah, trample on small creatures. It's, that's genuinely, like, a great question where players that are less, like, involved in the game will be like, what? I should make this bigger. Yeah. But they have that moment and yeah. then they do it and it's so satisfying yeah. and then they're just hooked. Yeah. So but, yeah, I th- and I think what's interesting too about Champion is like it's it's core spear dancer but they replace the draw card with trample mm-hmm. essentially. And obviously drawing a card is much is very very powerful and mm-hmm. stuff, but uh, trample is also very messed up. Like this, this thing is never going to get chumped or anything. Whereas I'll throw a squirrel token in front of score, core, core spirit dancer any day. So. There was a couple months ago. I don't know why they did this, but a couple months ago there was an arena open that was this Dominaria sealed. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I don't know why. Like <laughs> this is very recent, and so in the week leading up to that, they had this format back on arena, and it was great. I think I think that maybe that's just it. Like I think Dominaria uh, is a pretty universally enjoyed mm-hmm. one. Um, I, I know you were, I know for a fact that you're like kind of mid on I'm it. I'm famously a hater of yeah. this set. But, uh-huh. uh, it was kind of, I think one of the warm fuzzies I have about this was like this, this was the set that came out, uh, when I went to my first, I want to say, uh, GP Vegas. Uh, and it was great. I drafted so much of this. Mm-hmm. Next. <laughs> Yay. The familiars. Wow. I've never seen the green one. Oh yeah. Thornscape familiar. One and a green for an. T- an insect it's a 2-1 red and white spells you play cost one less to play I've never seen the green one I always see nightscape familiar mm-hmm. and occasionally sunscape I think one. so yeah Yep. but I've ne- I don't even think I've seen the other one the red or the blue one actually no I've seen the blue one the owl the owl stormscape yes I. but I've, I've never seen this card have you that, seen the red one I don't think so Thunderscape? No. It's a Kavu with First Strike. It's oh. a two mana one one first striker. Yeah. Oh wow. Look at that. Is that how right. come hey, how come this one gets an ability? Oh wait, no. Nightscape familiar has regenerate. Yes. Yeah. So the insect gets because it's green, it just gets one more power. <laughs> green big. Green yeah. big. <laughs> wow. You can make it a two two. Brutal. Yeah. Give it one more toughness at least. You're not giving it any relevant ability. Huh. I mean a two two with this ability is 
Pretty <laughs> messed up for yeah. 2009. I mean, yeah. maybe they're balancing it against the Kavu because at a 2-2, two, two, this this little beetle beats yeah. up a Kavu. That, I, Heather Hudson's another artist that I know that she's done stuff that I've liked, but this one. It says for some reason that beetle looks like it's going like, hey, yeah. come. Oh, no, this is a giant beetle because that's his helmet that he's yeah, yeah, yeah. stepping on. Okay. But still, All just right, the way enough. that it's like kind of floating over the background and looks like it, it looks from here like it has a, a big, dumb, toothy smile yes, and it's going yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, like, it's like, hi. Yeah. That's very, very strange. It's so cute. Yeah. What is the best of the familiars? Is it Nightscape? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's the most unique. It, it, it depends. I mean, Nightscape's one that keeps showing up in the cubes. Mm -hmm. So Nightscape is like classically the best just because it reduces blue. It's in black and it also reduces red. And like, so you have the Tudor color, the the ritual colors. It's all, it covers Storming. everything. Warming. This card, so that, and it saw uh, quite a bit of competitive play at like a higher level, like when you could play the Brain Freeze Storm decks in mm -hmm. Extended, and it saw play in Psychotog, it saw play in Block, saw just a lot of play throughout its life. Um, and then Sunscape, it, there's calm down popper players. Sunscape <laughs> Familiar is really good in popper because sure. that's kind of what the. Um, the ghostly flicker what? style deck. It's a wall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but it's literally yeah. just a wall. Yeah. 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 I know it's creature type wall. No, yeah. It's... But it's just a picture of a wall. <laughs> this is my familiar gestures to castle. <laughs> Yo, yeah. what the hell? The, the flavor text doesn't do it any fair soon. It's like the spirits of fallen battle mages can serve their guilds as familiars by joining with any physical form. So the, the ghost walls? The ghost was yeah. like, I'm in this wall now. <laughs> So this one sees a lot of play in uh, Popper, and it, it did see a bit of extended play, I think, in the Heartbeat combo, maybe, or other Stormlax. <laughs> this looks so stupid. Yeah. Cool. Uh, can we briefly go back to Nightscape Familiar for a second? Something I've never actually really paid attention to. There are other creatures in the background of this shot. Uh, can you identify? Yes, I can. Okay. So the, the creature in the background, Back or in the that we can mostly see is a metathran. That's the blue guy with the white hair. Yes, and I believe it is actually a nightscape. Oh, it's not nightscape battle mage. It looks like a store. It honestly looks like stormscape battle mage, which is interesting. But that one's also a blue. What's so the metathran are typically blue. They're like the Urza's super soldiers. Okay. Um and. One of them is a the yeah Stormscape Battle Mage, which is from the same set, same kind of like uh, vertical cycle, is uh, that. What like set that. is this? Planar Chaos? Plane Shift. Plane Shift. Right. Planar Chaos is the one after Future Sight. Yeah. Kind of looks like there's a Minotaur all the way in the back. And no, I was going to That's the other thing I was going to mm. ask. I don't think it's a Minotaur. It looks like it's a, it's a green, like thing with antlers some sort of like swamp beast it looks like there's a second one in shadows in the back like the reason i ask is because i swear i've seen that creature before well, but so i don't know what my 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 reasoning for thinking about that is because it's like it's blue and red so you have the metathran which is blue oh. and then the one back there is red and minotaurs are pretty notoriously red mm. but it could be some i mean it could be some other red thing no that's a really good thought i hadn't thought of that huh well if you know what that creature is way in the back of nightscape familiar so shoot us that in the comments. <laughs> Jeff Isley shows up and he's like, hey, yeah. it was this. Oh, hi, Jeff. All right, next. Oh, Magnanimous Magistrate, which is a card that I named. Is, is it? Yeah. Oh, hey, there I you go. I only just remembered that. Holy crap. Uh, five and a white for a three, four human advisor. Magnanimous Magistrate enters the battlefield with five reprieve counters on it. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies... If its mana value is one or greater, so no tokens, you may remove that many reprieve counters from Magnanimous Magistrate. If you do, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. Mm. Yeah, this was from Jumpstart22. This one's sweet. Yeah. I like this card a lot. I mean, that's a pretty hefty mana cost, I will say, for, for something. And I'm curious to see, because this is obviously, yeah, as we said, from Jumpstart. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this is probably Advisor's. Is my guess? Or... Did this go into Nelson's advisors list that I played on that CDH night? I don't. I don't know if it did. I. I mean, I feel Maybe like it, it should did. have. If it Probably, didn't, this thing's yeah. sweet. Yeah. yeah. But... Buy your dockside extortionist. Ooh. 
What's the best things to rebuy with this? Do you think you uh, want to you want to rebuy like a one mana thing five times? I want to rebuy a karmic guide. Mm. Um, <laughs> does this? You know, that whenever it, you can it, proliferate those reprieve times. counters. That's true. Yeah, with the sack outlet, you can go infinite with this and karmic guide. Uh, you could bring back yes, yeah, something to prolif- uh, proliferate. Mm-hmm. Um, or just, I don't know, getting back a Flicker Wisp style card to just rebuy this. This is my favorite kind of thing in Commander. It's just extremely annoying white value. <laughs> and uh, this would fit into a variety of those decks where you're just like, Flicker this, return this, your turn. <laughs> I know what I might do with this. What? So if it's on Jumpstart 2022, that yeah. means this is likely on Arena? I think so. Mm. No, is it not? It's no? Not, yeah. Okay. So Right. Uh, they haven't done that yet, right? They're doing something with Jumpstart 2022? Didn't they say that they were doing it? They're like, <laughs> they're like Jumpstart 2022 is not going on Arena, but we're working on a thing and you'll like it? That sounds like most of their announcements. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So one of the things that I'm playing right now is the new, in, from Mom, uh, Kroxa and... Uh, Kuranos? Okay. Uh, so what they do is they're a six drop, and when they enter the battlefield... Uh, you can exile, f- enter the battlefield or attack. You can exile five things from your bin and then return a creature card. From right, the they sort of give everything escape. Yeah, and so one of the things that people are talking about right now is that with Phyrexian uh, uh, Altar, or not Phyrexian Altar, Altar of Dementia, uh, it can you can sack it while that's on the stack, while that triggers on the stack, and you can kind of keep re- recurring it over and over oh. to basically your whole library. But if you have something like this, you can kind of go back and forth I guess, but I know. I guess it's a six drop, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So you'd have to figure out a way. Maybe, maybe not with that. But you could do some kind of shenanigans with this. One of the things that people end up killing people with is like if you have Sir Conrad or something, you can mm. go through your entire bin and just dome somebody out. Um, oh, I had a very funny game of the recent uh, cube on mm-hmm. Arena with. Uh, I had Sir Con- love Sir Conrad. I take Sir Conrad very highly, and <laughs> I got past him very late. And I was like, guess I'm in black. Yeah. Um, and uh, ended up with a murderous rider later on. And I, my opponent was at two, so I just attacked with Murderous Rider because they had to block, and they could have blocked and not killed it, mm. but they had a profitable block and they took it. And the problem there is Murderous Rider goes to the graveyard. That's a Sir Conrad trigger. Then Murderous Rider has an ability that says when it dies, you put it on the bottom of your library, which is a creature leaving your graveyard, mm-hmm. which is yet another clause but he, but he, of Sir Conrad's. <laughs> <laughs> so it just one one damage for dying and then another damage for leaving the graveyard, and then that just pinged them down. I was actually talking to uh, Rachel Weeks while she was here, um, and Sir Conrad came up, mm-hmm. and she had just like the, the kind of most universe brain take, which is... When you're playing Commander mm. and you play Sir Conrad, everyone's like, oh, well, we're going to kill you. Right. Sir Conrad is a messed up card, and in, especially in multiplayer. Yeah. So she took it out and replaced it with Dreadhound, which does functionally the same thing. Yeah. But nobody cares about dread, <laughs> so they don't they they don't look at you <laughs> as like much. And it builds three when it comes in, and it, like it doesn't have like that other thing. But yeah, dreadhound is whenever a creature dies or a card is put into a graveyard from a library, each opponent loses one life. <laughs> but nobody looks at you weird when you're like, I play this like uncommon. <laughs> I thought, yeah, here's a six mana blood artist. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Don't pay attention to me. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah. What a, I was like, that's actually so smart. That's hilarious. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So, uh, there you go. For for more Sir Conrad content. Uh, um, go go watch the most recent episode of Game Nights. Ooh, yeah. That uh, Kathleen and I are on. Uh, no spoilers, but Sir Conrad does does make an appearance. Uh, next, Quag yes. Sickness. Oh. Get up, come on, get down with Quag Sickness. Two and a black for an en- creature enchantment. Enchanted creature gets minus one, minus one for each swamp you control. Was this originally from Zendikar Block, or was this from this core set? No, this is the first printing of this, but there are uh, a couple different versions of this kind of card, like at three mana. Um, Exotic Curse, I think, is the. (laughs) What's the one I'm thinking of from Zendikar Block? I thought there was one that was like this, or maybe no, there was some sort of. Maybe it was a sorcery. My well, the Mind Sludge is in Zend reprinted in Zendikar Block, maybe, which is target player discards a card for each swamp you control. Mm. Anyway, Originally this one seems good. Yeah. Mind sludge, right, right, right. Uh, yeah, quag sickness. I, I know it's kind of like a kind of off take, and I know it's not necessarily like 
it's very rarely a super profitable venture when it comes to like Watsi and stuff. But like, I love cor- corsets. I've yeah. always, I've, I've, I've kind of been a corset fan for forever um, because it feels like the the one of the coolest like on ramps in terms of mechanics and stuff. Mm-hmm. I met a lot of people uh, last weekend who uh, actually because I did one of the pre release events mm. who actually just started in like Phyrexia because they like the theming mm. and all that kind of jazz. And I think it's actually it's like it's great in that way because if you don't corsets don't really have a theme a lot of yeah. the time they're just kind of like whatever right yeah um and people get but people are more attached to like the plane and the things going on and i can understand a lot of people looking at the phyrexia stuff and they're like this seems really cool mm-hmm. uh, and getting into it that way um but also mom is not a not complicated set no mom is pretty <laughs> yeah. heavy complexity and so it's like i'm like man getting into magic right now must be quite difficult i i frequently ask is there a vanilla creature in this format and a lot of the times lately it's not so i love corsets as an onboarding ramp but i understand that like nobody really gets excited about corsets yeah um and stuff i mean the first time that they that they stopped making corsets not the first time but like six years ago or something it was like a big thing it was like all right we're retiring the corset we're gonna just do it differently and then they brought it back and they're like ah the the you know what we decided no we do want to make corsets the corsets are back and then they just stopped doing it quietly <laughs> they were like uh the commander Pearl- afr has the, been placed the corset this year yeah was, uh, they just do like a supplementary product yeah, yeah and, and you know what and that's fine that's fine they just didn't make a big deal about it but apparently you know they have better data on this than we do yeah people just Generally, people just don't sense. like the core sets yeah. as much. Also, Jumpstart is now sort of Jumpstart more of an on board. It. True. Yeah. yeah. One, one thing I really like about core sets this era, like the earlier ones, stuff mm. from you know M10 to Magic Origins. I think M10 and uh, M11 is kind of can get lumped into it, but M10 is such a game changer. Mm. Like I came back to Magic, uh, and M10 was fresh, like the set that just came out, um, and. I was baffled because corsets to me were, oh, I opened Vizardrix, <laughs> like eighth edition, seventh edition, just like really bad uh, that maybe there's a Wrath of God. Like that was what a corset was. It's like, mm-hmm. okay, we get some lands, we get Wrath of God for standard or whatever. Um, but M10 was just so cool. Yeah. So it really felt like a revisiting to beta, mm-hmm. like a, that just that original theming and it got a lot of people myself included kind of being like and going from the oh yeah well, maybe i'll check out magic again to see what it's like and then just looking at it and going like oh so they're doing this now like that they actually give a care about the core sets mm-hmm. outside of just like a very functional like here's the cards that you need to play standard or whatever what i liked about again this era of core sets is a couple different things one uh, mechanically they they were still fun to draft. Like there were draft archetypes, oh, there God. were draft strategies, but nothing, be, be, like because it was the core set, nothing was necessarily too complex or there wasn't like st- stupendous bombs, mm-hmm. but it was still fun because everyone was operating on the same power level. So it yeah. was, yeah. you still got interesting gameplay, which I really liked. Uh, and then lore and flavor wise, uh, much more sort of the earlier core sets that you were talking about where they're just like and here's another weird thing on dominia prime mm-hmm. or whatever that they they use the core sets of this era to sort of like check in on all the different planes like yeah. you'd have a you'd have a card from kaladesh and then a card from zendikar yeah i thought that was really neat well i was gonna i was gonna say too like with the the lore there too i wonder if also they kind of not at the same ish time but like so magic arena exists now mm-hmm. a lot of the times they would use core sets to tie in with duels of the planeswalkers mm-hmm. oh, when yeah. they were coming in so i wonder if also part of that was like we no longer have this like tie-in product with it um so there's there's less to sort of like come across and whatnot, but uh, man, so, duels of the planeswalkers. Somewhere I still have my duels of the planeswalkers promo titans. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> only three of them. They only did three of them, but yeah, it was depending on what, what platform. If yeah, you were on Xbox, PlayStation, or Steam. Yeah, you I mean, get... obviously Arena exists now, and it's it's a great like onboarding tool and stuff like that. But even back, like even back then, before Arena existed, I would not recommend Duels of the Planeswalkers as like a come learn Magic thing <laughs> because it like AI cheats. In those yeah, games so I mean we we recommended Duels 
we always used to recommend duels as a way to learn the game just because it was a computer game and it's like it yes, will, yes all the rules are there and so there, you can you, understand you priority and stuff but yeah yeah although i saw an amazing suggestion uh this is not the promo one from the from the is this is this the duels promo yeah, Why am I thinking it's this a different is, uh, one? The Grave Titan duels. I must be imagining a different one. I was, You're thinking of giant. the ones with Inferno Titan. Inferno Titan. I'm I'm imagining the giant striding. Yeah. There's... Person. Anyway, um, uh, someone suggested on the subreddit, I think, of like single player arena content. That's the one I'm mm. imagining. Yeah, it was the Inferno Titan. Um, sort of like, and I think this is a great idea. Though I mean, it entirely depends on having the developer cycle to do it. Is every time a set comes out, that you play through optionally uh, a a series of sort of like story inspired encounters, essentially that can help tell you some of the story of the set. And if you remember back on Duels of the Planeswalkers, I used to love this. There would be like puzzle levels yeah. where it's like we drop you in. You're at three life. Your opponent's at ten. That's their board. This is your board. Here's your hand. How do you win this? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I liked those a lot. I one, thought those were really cool. One of the most successful things that Hearthstone did back in, like, when it was, yeah, yeah, it was they started releasing content exactly like what you're talking about. Yeah. And as you played through, you would earn the cards, the bosses that you're fighting and stuff like that yeah. into your collection. I think it's a really cool idea. And it was a great way of doing it. And they would have, like, voice lines and, and whatnot uh, of, of the characters, and, and they'd have, like, different abilities and stuff. So, yeah, I think I think single-player content in card games uh, has a lot of, uh, like, not staying power. The, a lot of a lot of strength, I think, in, in doing something It's more like fun than you'd think. Yes. Yeah. After I would... having played through so many goddamn anime card game single players <laughs> where it, it, it's always like i don't know is this really what i want to do and then playing it, it's like oh i'm actually learning the game and having fun and even if it's like really corny or cheesy yeah. it's just like that's part of the thing yeah like you can yeah. feel like also a, like every new set it'd be like all right sparky yeah <laughs> what do you got for me this time you could add replay value too by doing like challenge modes and yeah. stuff like that on there too i was always one i like i like the mission system is already in arena but doing something along the lines of like achievements and stuff i think would also be kind of fun like where you like do x things during a, a match they're not just like play red x red spells like if you're like i don't know tap a sigiled starfish five times or whatever or something like that in a game. I, I, yeah, I think there's a lot of really fun things that you could do that's not just competitive-oriented magic. I will say, back in the beta, they did the, the, the daily challenges, the ones that are like cast spells of this color or play X number, flip, play 40 lands or whatever. They, they were much more specific to, like they were much more granular about like what you had to do. And some of them... in. Uh, like some of them you could also fail like some of them involved like winning not fail but some of them were like required like winning an, a certain number of games and then and i think this is a good change they changed it to just like no no you can still lose the games and progress your dailies and that's a much better idea but i, I do like the idea of an additional mm -hmm. challenge mode with things with things like that something so, a little bit easier to earn you got master. the dev cycles for this right ian yeah it'd be fine <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to receiving a DM about that. <laughs> um, You're giving away our secrets. Yeah. Uh, we got uh, probably time for two more. Two or sure. three, depending on All right, what we, we go. pull up. Let's see what we got. Run wild. Mm. What on that is? Oh, that's a good one. Onslaught, baby. What yeah. kind of beast is that? Single green mana for an instant. Until end of turn, target creature gains trample and for one green, regenerate this creature. So I love this era of beasts. Mm -hmm. uh, because is this it? is It's all horn. This is where they gave beasts just absolutely absurd names. And I want to make an EDH deck that's just beast tribal with the weird, like Brontotherium mm. and like stuff like that, like where they all just have like absurd names. Kurgadon. Like, yeah, yeah. What's the, uh, it's like Kirkathrop or something like, it's like a, it's a green... Uh, Vaguely describe it for me. Birdegrost or something. It's so it's a. I'm trying to remember. It's like a nine nine or something like that. But it gets like weaker if you. It's like Gerzagrost. You're thinking of Gerzagost from Torment. Torment. Sure. Yeah. 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 Gerzagost. Gerzagost. How do you spell that? Uh, G u r z i g o s t. I think. I know James is trying to find it's it. A, right it's a six eight. It's five mana. Getting your upkeep, you got to sacrifice it unless you pitch card or put exile cards from your graveyard or 
Put them on the bottom. There's uh, a ghost. And then you can pay two and discard a card from your hand to give it, like, Thorn Elemental text. Yeah. You may have oh, to yeah. deal damage to the defending players that weren't blocked yet. Oh, yeah. Got in one. Scott M. Fisher. This hey. was in one of the uh, Torment Precon decks, the was theme it? decks. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, I love the beasts of, of this era of oh, magic, yeah. where they just have just absurd names. Yeah. <laughs> Grizzagos. That's a weird one. <laughs> Is Run Wild any good? It's single mana. God, no. Give it trample. Oh, it's a, I mean, not a lot of combat tricks give a creature trample. That's true. From this era? Also, regenerate. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of a two mana. I got some bad news about that draft format, though. Oh. Yeah, Sparksmith is common. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's the goblin that you can... Uh... Taps to deal damage to a creature equal number of goblins Self. in play, and then it deals that much damage to you. Mm -hmm. So if you get it on the play, you just the opponent never gets a creature, basically. Ooh. Especially because morphs were running around, and morphs were always two twos. Mm. So... And then Timberwatch Elf, and yeah, it was a mess. It was a mess. Huh. <laughs> we should try to... <laughs> he says stupidly, we should try to draft that sometime. Like, I can't imagine how expensive, if even possible, to get those packs would be. I don't think it's as much, because while it's like OG fetch lands, super, like, you'd assume it's mm -hmm. pretty expensive. Onslaught was a set with, like, 350 cards. Like, it is the big... It's a big set from that era, mm. and... There's not much that's expensive outside of well, like yeah, that. and and fetches aren't even that big anymore. So yeah, yeah, we, we could reprints. we could we could purchase a sealed box of onslaught from Card Kingdom, our friends over at Card Kingdom for one thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents. But if we do it as a sponsored stream, <laughs> yeah. also we don't need the full box. It's true. We could buy individual packs for fifty nine ninety nine. <laughs> they have thirty four available, All so right. we could do it. Yeah, yeah. Not to sound like a Rockefeller or anything, but like that's actually not that bad no. for a set that came out like twenty years ago yeah. with some like chase cards. It doesn't yeah. you can? I'm sure viewers, viewers at home can see me doing the mental math on if we could honestly expect multiple hundreds of dollars of return in value for a. Maybe not in cards, but certainly in it, bits. It, no, I'm talking. That's what I mean. I'm it, talking it, about. I'm talking life about experience. Would the would the would the content we create? What with about that exposure? Justify the, the cost? Yeah. It could. It yeah. could. Maybe. Yeah. All right. I got two more for you. All right. This one's this one's weird. Ah, <laughs> Vanguard, baby. <laughs> ah, right. Urza, a character, uh, it, starting max hand size minus one, starting life. Plus 10, 3 mana, Urza deals 1 damage to target creature or player. What in the unholy hell is this card? Vanguard. It's a cool new way to play Magic the Gathering. <laughs> Copyright uh, 1999. Sure is. Um, so the stuff at the bottom there basically provides a modifier to uh, your, op your starting life and your hand size. And then there are some of them that have some changes to like static abilities. Or changes to how you would start the game, additional ones, but they tend to come with some other ability. Um, this one just can ping. I don't remember Urza being that great for Vanguard. There are three of them that I think are just like, what were you thinking? <laughs> like even in the because they're like starting hand size plus five. Were these then, <laughs> were these ever made as physical cards or were these only Magic Online? Yes, oh, they were physical cards. They're not. Like the size of like a, a normal card, they're slightly larger. Huh. Um, I've never seen one in person. Next Magic Con you're at, yeah. if you have time to look through the dealers, you will probably see a couple of them. Huh. Uh, I saw some in Phillies at uh, dealers with them uh, for ones that were uh, related to the one storyline. Mm, interesting. Like the era. I should say the uh, the 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 most long-lasting sort of repercussionary ripple of Vanguard uh, is the existence of the Momir format. Yeah. Because that was... did the, the the way that you played that originally on Magic Online was the Momir Vig avatar yes. did that thing. Yeah. Uh, and, or Vanguard, whatever it is. Anyway, um, and so that was the... That was what you... That was how you played Momir. It was just like, all right, we're both going to show up with a deck full of lands and we're just going to roll the dice on Momir. Mm -hmm. And then that became that format 
I think it is otherwise, I would say, forgotten to the mists of time. Yeah, I think you were kind of right though, too. Like, because didn't it be, used to be on Midgo that uh, if you got if you had the Vanguard card, you also got it as an avatar? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think you're right there. Uh, what's interesting is so I did a mystery booster draft, uh, and they kind of ex- have experimented with this again as a card type again because there's one planeswalker from it called like Lugovia. It's a test card um, that it's you become that planeswalker and your life total is tied to its loyalty of the bear one it's not or a that, bear the art looks it like... kind of looks like a bear yeah. yeah sure yeah it's luvovia something or other I, I i genuinely can't remember but like yeah your life total becomes that you are the planeswalker they kill that you're dead huh um and then yeah life gain things will increase your loyalty and it has all the regular loyalty abilities and stuff oh. um and uh i like that concept a lot but it would need to have some text like can't be removed by like destroy target planeswalker or something but um it was it was really cool i i pulled both of the planeswalkers in the test thing it's that and the duck oh, yeah. uh <laughs> it's called personal decoy yeah which is it enters with loyalty equal to your life and then they have to attack the personal decoy they can't attack you that's amazing um and then i also had it's um too much of a good thing. I didn't realize there were new playtest cards. This is exciting. Uh, it's. I think these ones are still from like <laughs> yeah, the convention be, edition. Yeah. Oh, I don't remember. Um, but it's Planes called like good duck. thing or too much of a good thing. It's it's three white black for uh, an enchantment that cannot be sacrificed or removed or anything on your own. They your opponent can remove it, but you can't. It spells and abilities you control can't destroy, exile, target, or cause you to sacrifice a good thing at the beginning of your upkeep. Double your life total. Then if you have a thousand or more life, you lose the game. So with this and the Luvia guy where you become, your your loyalty just keeps going up and stuff. And Luvia has a minus X, which is just dome anything. So I played five color with this, Luvia, and personal decoy. That's amazing. Uh, and I went 3-0. No kidding. <laughs> okay. It was very, very goofy. Um, the, love mystery boosters. Before I move off of Urza, the Mark Tadeen art, which is great, looks like there's more going off the right hand side of frame is there a mishra avatar from vanguard I that perhaps has so. the second half of this tableau mm-hmm. i'm i'm inferring just because it it's it would it's odd framing uh if it's not and mark to is uh generally does pr- pretty good work i don't see really i'm sure there's there's got to be a vanguard there's here. karn there's got to be something over there joy if not joy Maybe there's was... Miri. I don't think Miri would be on there. There's no, no Yogmoth. What about what's her face? The um, she got a Planeswalker one semi recently, um, but used to just be like a spell shaper kind Jaya? of spell card. No, not Jaya. It is red. Uh, she's from Commander Legends. Oh, Jessica. 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 She kind no. Of involved in this? No. No. Jessica is uh. Jessica. Uh, well, J- I'm gonna lore. Uh, Jessica is uh. Kamal's sister. Mm, okay. From uh, the Odyssey block. Yeah. And then just becomes Phage. Anyway, I love that random rolls on Skyfall can still bring you <laughs> Van- tokens. <Yeah. laughs> yeah. Vanguard. That's great. Oh, yeah. maybe. I don't know if this is going to work. Let's try it. Oh, yeah, okay. there oh, you it go. is. It is the other yeah, side of that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. If you put them right. side by side, double all damage, double Wait, creatures. Wait, Mark Tadine did one half and Anson Maddox did the other half? Huh. They That's together, so weird, but it's clearly a a, yeah. a panorama. Like because you see the wing of the, the pokey bits. Light yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Weird. That's so unusual. We should play Vanguard. <laughs> we that should play Vanguard. Vanguard. That would be that yeah. Would be we should. Fun. It's just like, hey, guess what? Here's another. Here's another totally official way to play Magic: The Gathering. You forgot. Remember about. that for our meeting this weekend, James. <laughs> Man, I love. I want to play the Exelon board game again sometime. Uh, all right. What's our last card from the day? Me, meteor crater. God, we've hit a lot of. Really bad cards from this era, haven't we? <laughs> Turns out there's a surprising number of bad cards in this in this game. Uh, it's a land. Tap, choose a color of a permanent you control, add one mana of that color to your mana pool. So if this is your first land, this taps for nothing. Mm-hmm. Also, Great. if it's li- likely if it's your second land. Yeah, also yeah. taps for nothing, yeah. yeah. Wait, you can't even... Hang on, choose a color of a permanent you control, add one mana... Yeah, it's color, not type. So there's no way. So you literally it. can't, until you have something in play yeah. that isn't a land. Yeah. This 
can't generate any mana, not even colorless. Yeah. If you get board wiped, it's nothing. It's a rare. <laughs> Look, it's a rare. Why? <laughs> I was laughing at the flavor text, which is, legend has it that meteor craters are haunted by the ghosts of those who died on impasse. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you die, man? Look around you. <laughs> well, yeah, how you how does it look like I died? <laughs> what the? That's awful. <laughs> yeah. I'm racking my brain to see how this could be good, and it's not. No, it's all bad. Yeah. Why is it rare? Just so it doesn't show up in draft boosters often? I mean, it's worth five bucks, so somebody's playing what? it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. Commander changes prices for reasons that no one can really so... understand. <laughs> And colorless doesn't count as a color. Yeah. Right. So, like, even if you had just, like, a if you turn one soul ring or no. something, you no. still get nothing. Yeah. yeah. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool card. Huh. Wow. Lands were really bad. They were either, back in the day, they were either really, like, City of Brass style lands mm. or... Or Rhystic Caves. Um, yeah, or Rhystic Cave or Meteor Crater. Kobolds are free. So, That's zero true. mana, play your red card. We did the, it. Then you can tap Meteor Crater yeah, for a now, mountain. We, we, finally, we, we broke it. Yeah, we open. broke it with Cobalt. We've unlocked Syracuse. Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're in a worse position against Price of Progress, but we've figured out how to tap Meteor Crater would, for mana. I would like to see, I mean, like the top 10 lists are not typically my thing, but I would like to see like the, the, the worst, the top 10 like worst lands. Of all time because there are some real stuff. You gotta you gotta have the caveat of I think mana producing because then you yes. get it's just Soros path. Yeah. Um yeah. Maybe Meteor we should be the change there. we want to see in the world. Maybe yeah. this is something we should do. Ooh, sheltered valley. That's a good one. James, can we get sheltered valley up on screen? This is a uh it's a land, it technically adds mana. It has some very interesting text on it. Uh, I'm going to read directly from the card, if you don't mind. Please. When Sheltered Valley comes into play, bury any other Sheltered Valley you control. <laughs> then, okay. during your upkeep, if you control three or fewer lands, gain one life. Tap to add a colorless mana to your mana pool. <laughs> so you can't have multiples of this. Yeah. It only adds colorless mana. And while gaining a life a turn is pretty cool, you can only have this and two other lands... And then one of your land is a colorless land. So you're probably not being able, you know, can't do what typical low to the ground decks are looking to do. Sure, but, 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 you mm -hmm. could tap the sheltered valley, float the mana, then play another sheltered valley, Boom. <gasps> sacrifice the other one, and then you can cast a four drop. Well, no, because it's, uh, oh, wait, no. Yes, you could. We've uh, yeah. invented half a city of traders. <laughs> yeah, it's very bad. <laughs> Holy moly. All right. That's going to do it for this episode. Boy, Scryfall really lets a blast. Thank you, James. Um, if you're watching this and are wondering who supports this show, wow, that was a awkward segue. Uh, it's Card Kingdom. Check out cardkingdom.com slash LRR. Please go there and uh, and and purchase their cardboard. Um, more buttons are inbound shortly. I've been busy. Uh and, of course, this show and everything we do is brought to you by you and your kind of support of our Patreon at patreon.com slash loadingreadyrun. Until next time, I have been Graham, joined by Wheeler. Thank you for having me, Graham. It was great to shirt here. <laughs> and Ben. I wasn't even supposed to be here today. James is on tech. Heather gets these online. Thank you all so much for watching and listening, and we'll talk to you next time. Oh, also, the nicknames are coming up. We're opening the nicknames. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, thank you, James. I got there. Nicknames, uh, website lrr.cc slash nicknames. Uh, we're going to be opening up for mom nicknames basically when you hear this. So go check that out. Okay, bye for real now. Goodbye.